Hey, welcome back to Inspired Creativity Summit. I am Rachel Maines. I'm so blessed to be co-hosting with Carol Frazier. And Carol, I'm excited um, to get to know this lady. We have Stacey Frenis today, and she is just multi-talented. That is for sure. Absolutely. You know, um, Stacey um, is an acoustic folk pop singer, and she has inspired concert audiences all over the country and millions of viewers on network shows such as The Biggest Loser and America's Next Top Model and Nashville, as well as nationally released feature films. And so Stacy, as a singer songwriter has really been out there and doing her work. She crosses over into the secular world and also into the Christian music world as well. She's an amazing speaker she has just blessed so many people and she has a book um she has a couple of books out uh, a book on creativity called flourish and if you haven't gotten it yet i highly recommend it we'll definitely be sending you links to get her book flourish on creativity and then her new book love makes room and so um, i'm really excited to introduce stacy to you stacy frenis I'm here to state my resolution Starting today, not gonna waste a minute of my time Each day's a sacred invitation A beautiful gift You know, I met her at Carmel Presbyterian Church. It was amazing. I saw this angelic woman up front singing and worshiping and leading our church. And then she got to sing her own beautiful original songs. And I think it's Stacey, didn't I just like kind of huddle up to you after, after the service? And I was like, I want to be your friend. <laughs> You did. It was so sweet. And I immediately felt like we were kindred spirits. So that was a lovely serendipitous meeting. Loved it. It was. Well, I absolutely love the song that we've been listening to of yours. And you told me that this is a new song coming out, right? It is. It's on a brand new EP I just recorded. I wrote and recorded it during the pandemic. And it's a song that really reminds me to keep my heart and eyes wide open and say yes to opportunities that present themselves, you know? Thank you for saying yes to the Inspired Creativity Summit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, every little yes. <laughs> I love that. I thought it might, might be my new morning mantra song. I mean, mm -hmm. really, I really felt like it was just so opening and so receiving to what God has for us every day. And, um, you know, I think as Christians, we get to, we get to follow every little step after him. And you put it so beautifully in that song. Go to stacyfrenis.com and uh, check out everything she has to offer as far as her creativity and her artistry. I mean, you just weave it together mm. so beautifully. It, even though you do a lot of different things, and you kind of float in between, you know, and I love that you, you're, you're the in-between girl, but you make it seamless and beautiful. I think, you know, I've always had a love of words and music. And I think that's where the, the different modalities, if you will, come in, you know, I, I love words. So I'm a writer. I've always been a writer since I was, I think a little girl, I kept journals and I wrote a whole novel in the third grade wow. <laughs> and, you know, it's, of course it's awful, but it, I loved writing and poems. Um, and then around junior high, I learned how to play guitar and piano and, um, also had my first real encounter with Jesus as, um, a junior high, little 12 year old, seventh grader. Um, and all of those things together, kind of my first spiritual awakening as to who God was in the person of Jesus, as well as, um, just discovering this gift for songwriting came alive at the same time in my life. And, um, 
so thank you for saying that it, it really is just kind of an outpouring of the two great passions that well, three great passions I have, of course, one is for God and the other is for, you know, words and for music and however that looks. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. And I just want to let our audience know that uh, at the end of today, uh, Stacy is also going to be offering a free gift to you all. And we're going to be sending you to where you can find her, like online and on YouTube. And so um, we're really excited to bring Stacy to you. If you haven't met her or experienced her art or artistry, you are really in for just a beautiful blessing. Beautiful blessing. I, I feel that way every time I listen to your music or listen to you speak. And, you really, you really are a blessing to people. So well, thank today you. you were talking about inspired creativity and co-creating with God. And it sounds like you've been doing this for a while. Allowing God. I have, I've, I really have been a creator, if you will, for really since I was um, a young girl. And of course I didn't really look at it that way. I didn't see myself as an artist or um, anything special. It, for me, it was really um, connecting to that deep place in me that brought me joy. And I think that's the, the heart of creativity is connecting to our joy. And, uh, you know, I think I've gone through seasons of my life where there's been kind of a dormancy in that creativity. And almost every time I walk through that season, and then in hindsight, look back on it, I can say, well, you know, I think I was disconnected for a while from my joy and then, you know, it happens. I mean, life brings difficult seasons, um, but I'm learning, you know, like last year during the pandemic, um, so many of us cr creative people were just kind of overwhelmed. Like, how do you even begin to express or share, you know, or even dig into your own giftings and, and create when, you know, there's just kind of this heavy, heavy cloud of oppression and sadness and grief. And, um, and yet somewhere around the middle of that, I feel like my heart, I started dreaming and I started writing in my journals and these ideas and song titles and melodies started swirling in my heart and my mind uh, around the things I was learning just, because, you know, even in those heavy times, you can say, oh, it's all bad. It's all sad. It's all dark, but it's not, you can see and find those little, those treasures in darkness. You know, you can find those, for me, it was those lessons that the pandemic, the unexpected gifts of the pandemic, um, the ability to be quiet, the ability to spend time with family, um, the ability to stop being so driven by productivity and learning to rest. Um, some of those little gifts in my life happened during that dark season. And so kind of allowing myself to create during that time was such a gift to me. And then as it happens with all of us creators, you know, the gift that is giving to you during the season while you're creating it then becomes a gift to others when you're able to put it out there and to share it with others. Um, and so I think those times that we're, that we feel kind of most paralyzed in our gifts are when we think we have nothing to say, when, uh, you know, life is hard or when we just don't want to go digging into the deep places of our heart because it's painful. It's hard to talk about hard things. Um, and yet that is the job of the creator to kind of talk about those things in a poetic, different way in order, I think, to better remind everyone that we're all in this together. We all feel these things, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, Stacy, this is, you know, inspired creativity, co-creating with God, and you have an amazing walk with the Lord. How do you, can you describe to us that co-creation um, with Jesus, how you go about that and how he inspires you to write more and just to be better as an artist? Absolutely. One of my real life verses several years ago began to just make its way into my soul and especially my creative soul. And that was Ephesians 2.10 that says, you know, we are his workmanship um, created anew in Christ Jesus so that we might walk in the steps that he's prepared for us beforehand. And I think something wonderful about that verse occurred to me a few years back. And that is, you know, not only are we the the workmanship, the artwork of God. And, and just even pressing pause on that for a moment is part of the creator's job. You know, it's part of the, 
process of my creating is to say, oh, you know, I am a work of art right. to God. And to just kind of marinate in that truth for a while, I think is so healing and so um, enlightening and empowering to a creator. Um, so first that piece of it, it needs to just sink in and, me, you know, I think meditating on that, just what does that mean that God sees me as his greatest creation, his, his, you know, I always laugh and say, it's sort of like, we're the Pulitzer prize, we're the Oscar winning film. We're the, you know, we're the award winning, whatever we're the top. We're the thing that God waits till the very end because he saved the best for last when he created us. And so there's that piece of it. And then after that in the verse says, um, you know, created a new in Christ Jesus. So there's that new life, right? That ongoing regenerative life that Jesus brings within us daily, hourly. And then so that we might, you know, walk in the good works. That part of it kind of hit home for me when I thought about a piece of art that's functional. When I thought about something like the Greek urns that were so beautifully painted and, you know, some of them just sort of sat in these rich people's homes just to be looked at. But in many ways they were actually used. They were filled with water. They were filled with wine. They were used as pitchers. And I see each of us in that way that we have this beauty. That's this just, you know, imbibed by the creator, but also it's a functional beauty. It's a beauty that's meant to be poured out to the people around us, the people that God puts in our path. And, um, so that to me, I think is one of the ways. I mean, that's a little bit more lofty maybe than your question called for, but <laughs> it starts with that for me, really creating the mindset of what am I here to do? What am I here for? And then, um, really again, following those places of deep joy is, is part of it for me. Um, and deep sadness, you know, um, I think one of the things I realized early on about a great song or a great poem is that a lot of times it starts with something deeply emotional, um, deep, sometimes in many cases, re a struggle or, a, a grieving point or a pain point. And working through that for me involves finding a metaphor for it. It involves, um, you know, kind of teasing out the different, the different aspects of it that maybe aren't the obvious ones, but ones that I want to explore and talk about in a song lyric or in a, in a paragraph of a book. But, you know, it's, it's both it's deep joy and deep sadness. I think that kind of stir those creative embers in me. Right. Yeah. That's beautiful. I love that. You know, all three of us are songwriters and, uh, and Christian singers that also we all, we, we kind of go in between as well. You know, I know that, I don't know, Stacey, I don't know if you knew that about Rachel, but she's also a songwriter. I didn't. And, and I love the fact that you, you said, you know, when you go into those deep times, you really get to explore ways of creatively, you know, sharing and healing through those times. And it's interesting. I've been in such a happy time in my life for a while. I haven't been songwriting and I'm like, because <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people came from sadness or struggle. And so I'm getting to learn as a songwriter to write from the joy. And you said that, you know, you have blessed me so mm. much just in this 15 minutes. Mm, I'm so glad. Well, and to your point, you know, it's the valleys are fertile, right? A lot of times you go up to the mountaintop, there's not a lot growing up there, but as we know, <laughs> life will bring us down to the valley again, you know, <laughs> in time. Um, so there's, I think there's seasons too, where we feel that deep need to create and other times where we just feel the need to, to enjoy life and what it has for us and to not be constantly applying the artist lens to it, you know? That's beautiful. Rachel, do you feel that way sometimes in your writing too? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's easy to write when you have highs and lows, like high, high joy and a low, low, low. <laughs> but mm -hmm. sometimes for me, when it's just like, the mundane or the everyday and I don't have a high or a low, it can, it can be challenging. That's when you have to get real disciplined. I feel like, and just like put it on your calendar and just have a goal. I'm going to write a song at least in a week or, you know, have five songs in a month or that's when I find I have to just kind of take it as discipline. And it's more like work then, than the fun, 
of when I have emotion attached to it and I have the high, high or the low, low. Um, that's been my experience. Yeah. I agree. And, and one of the things for me that helps me in those kind of real mundane seasons helps me feel inspired is I turn sometimes to, to poetry. Like I'll, I'll pick up a Mary Oliver book of poems or a Wendell Berry. Those are two poets for me that just, they talk about the most ordinary, a lot of times it's connected to nature, but very ordinary a walk in the woods or just stepping outside your front door and they'll create something just wonderful and magical and think something I hadn't ever thought about in that moment. And I go, Oh, okay. So maybe even in this mundane, there can be something I can kind of dig out of it. And so poetry is really helpful and inspirational for me. That's a great idea. I had never thought of that. What a great idea. And those two, particularly for our listeners, it's like Mary Oliver, she just has this beautiful way of connecting to nature and to just the everyday. And same with Wendell Berry, very similar styles. Um, and I think they'll find that to be a really creative spark for them. Yeah. Wonderful idea. Yeah. You've written a book about creativity. Can you tell our listeners about it? And I honestly I have not read it. I can't wait to read it. In fact, Today, I'm going to go download it and start it this afternoon. So. Oh, uh, okay. yeah, I think. Um, is it a download? Can I buy it like on Amazon or? You can. Yeah, you can buy it on Amazon as a digital download. You can also buy the audiobook on Amazon, which is handy. Um, and then the paperback. So this is a book I wrote several years ago in one of those seasons I was talking about a minute ago where things were just one after another going wrong. It seemed like in my life, it was just one really heavy um, challenge after another big life challenges. And I found myself in a season where I, I didn't want to pick up my guitar. I didn't want to write um, for the very reason that it just felt too overwhelming. I thought, how could I ever put words to this? How could I make this into something artsy and, you know, entertainment when it feels so heavy for me? And and of course, as I described, you know, I, I found myself really isolated from myself and from God and from my own gifts. And it, it was not, it made it worse really to not connect to my gifts and to not write it, write about it. So after that, I, or even really in the middle of that, I began writing a book about how do other artists do this? How do other artists create, um, in difficult times and how do other, you know, what is their process and what does it mean for them? And I, I just began to kind of do these kind of impromptu interviews with some of my artist friends and not just artists, but homemakers. I mean, I have a, girl, a girlfriend of mine who loves to make just gorgeous gourmet meals just because she loves to cook. And I saw it for her as the same, it, like it, it provided the same joy and outlet for her as songwriting did for me, you know, like thinking up a great meal. And I remember just talking to people and seeing patterns in how it is that we find joy in creating and how it is that we um, really thrive and flourish when we are deeply connected to our gifts. And so I wrote a book about that called Flourish. And um, it, I, actually still go back to that book and find little nuggets of inspiration and help when I'm in kind of a, a dry season for myself creatively, um, just because it, it draws from, you know, homemakers to filmmakers, to songwriters, to, um, actors, a lot of different artists across the board, but all of it also has kind of the theme of spirituality running through it is how does, how do our gifts connect us to the great work of God? And how do we really reflect his glory by staying connected to our gifts and our creativity. Oh my yeah, God. I love that. I love I that. Think every listener, every listener of the Inspired Creativity Summit needs to listen to this because basically flourish is exactly what we're talking about. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really digging into like, like what you do, Rachel, digging into the heart of an artist, but yeah. how they how they sit with God in that creative process. Right. And you have a new book that is just taking off. Love yeah. It. An unexpected book, to be honest with you. It's a, it's a book I didn't expect to write. And it was one of those, um, it really poured out of my heart um, from a desire to tell a story of a deeply um, personal 
kind of transformation of faith in my life and also just a deeply personal family story uh, about our daughter who several years ago as a teenager came out as gay. And um, we're a deeply, you know, evangelical Christian family and have gone to church since my kids were born. They were baptized and dedicated in church. And I tell you, it was just one of those unexpected life moments where I, um, I didn't really know what to do with this information and with this new reality that was happening in, in our family. And so, uh, you know, I think for a few years, I didn't do anything, but just process and pray and walk through it with our daughter and our family, which we did. And we remained very close to her and, um, work through it together, but wrote this book for other families, especially Christian families who, um, are faced with situations like these where their kids are coming out as LGBTQ and not knowing what, just what the process looks like of how to get through that season with love, staying connected to your kids, staying connected to God, staying connected to your family and, you know, grieving where you need to grieve, but also learning to celebrate what can still be celebrated, obviously in, in the beauty of who your child is. So it, it's a song called, I mean, a, a book called love makes room and it, it's the first book I've written actually for a traditional publisher. It, it got um, a literary agent really loved it and, and championed it and, and was able to get me a book deal. So it's been a cool experience being on, cause I've been an independent artist all my life as a songwriter. I mean, I've written, I've released 10 albums and a book all independently on my own. This is the first time I've been with um, a major publisher and it's been, it's been really cool, really eye opening, And it's, it's lovely to get that particular story out to the people that really need to hear it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I was so, I've been really blessed and it's been fun to watch its growth. Mm. So I'm, you know, I'm a fan on your page and and just, you know, just the honesty that you embrace is, is quite, uh, quite humbling for the rest of us. You know, we all get to have, we all get to come to a place of honesty in our lives and I, mm -hmm. embraced it. And, and your daughter, you guys are close. Like I see pictures of you all as a family. It's like you all embrace this together. We did. We did. And it's, that's not to say there weren't rocky times because there were, and that's part of the honesty. I really, when I sat down to write the book, I was committed to not holding back on any of the, you know, the realities of what, especially I really, my husband and I had to, had to deal with in coming from a background that approaches this topic so um, differently than what I knew I needed to be for my daughter. And, um, the honesty in that I felt I owed that to other parents to not gloss over any of that, but to say, here's, you know, here's, here's the real deal and talk through some of those hard conversations. And, and I really wrote about mine and Abby's relationship and how it, it went through ups and downs and how communication was the key for us just being committed to staying, to talking through, even if we didn't always agree a hundred percent, but talking through these things together. And yeah, I, I did feel like I needed to be as, as honest as possible. And sometimes it's scary to put out such an honest story into the world. Um, but ultimately I, I do feel it's worth it. Yeah. I think that's amazing. You know, I work with, with authors as an artist development coach, and that's the biggest block that I find mm. across the board, no matter what they're writing, is, is that honesty piece. Cause they like, they're like, I want to write my story and they get there and they get so much fear. What are people going to think? What are people going to say, you know? And then they just, they, they stop. And so it's usually just getting them through that piece. What would you say to an author or someone who feels led to write their story? I mean, you already said so much, but any other nuggets? Cause you have so many. Yeah. I would just say that, um, uh, it's oftentimes the, the, and isn't this true with life? You know, it's often the things that you feel the most shame around or embarrassment or fear to share. That is the, the very thing that someone needs to hear the very thing that someone else is struggling with. And, you know, withholding those things and glossing over them, we're not doing each other any favors. We're really not, whether it's in our Instagram posts 
or it's whether it's in our public speaking or it's in the books we write or the songs we write, you know, if we're not going to be honest, really, truly vulnerable, then why bother? Because to me, if art doesn't reflect that really core vulnerability, I don't, I don't resonate with it. You know, I resonate with really honest art. And I think the same is true of, of writing books. It's like, you know, bleed it onto the page or people are going to know that you withheld and they're going to feel cheated. I, I, I feel cheated when I pick up a memoir or um, a spiritual book where someone just kind of goes, you know, kind of from point A to point Z and they don't really cover any of the, the hard things that happened along the way. Um, I think those hard things are the very things that connect us with others. I love that. Yeah. And um, I love the word vulnerability because when I first started to be a singer and a songwriter and even doing radio, quite honest, I think everything I do creatively, creatively um, is a feeling of vulnerability. It's a feeling of being naked and yep. you got to get past that to be able to inspire people, to be able to use the gifts that we have. It's just such a interesting feeling. Wouldn't you say ladies, just that feeling naked feeling? Absolutely. It's it's uncomfortable, but you got to push, push through it. You do. And people help you, you know, like once you kind of put it out there and it's both like, there's times when I've put like a, an Instagram post out or I've, I've, you know, said something and sometimes it's just crickets, like nobody's responding and no one's saying, yeah, me too. But you know, um, other times people just jump on board and go, that's exactly how I feel. That's, ex- oh, you just, you put it into words, exactly what I was feeling. And, you know, those are the times you just look at and go, okay, there's the encouragement to do it again and to be more brave next time. And you just kind of, you know, take it in increments and get better at it, I think. Yeah. I love that. You know, you talk about being naked, you know, naked in your vulnerability. And I think the thing I love about you, Stacy, is that it's like you're really comfortable in your skin. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you're, you're, you seem to be like completely present, completely here now. You know, you can I can really sense the Holy Spirit just coursing through you. You know, I think that that's what drew me to you was your vulnerability, your honesty, your honesty in your lyrics. Mm. And, and you can hear it in your voice, like your resonance of your voice is just, well, I want to say spectacular, but at the same time, it's, it's real. You know what I mean? You're uh-huh. not, you're just singing from your heart and you can hear that and you can feel that and you write from your heart. And um, I honestly am so excited to read your books. Oh, thank you so much. That means so much that you, that you said that. Thank you. Yeah. yeah very sincere. I think that's, you know, as an artist and as entertainers, right? There's Mm -hmm. that artistry and entertainment piece. Sure. In front of people and we get to um, entertain them or lead them through worship. But we, uh, we can't do that until we're really grounded and really in the presence of God and in our skin and here. That's really true. And, you know, one of the things that helped me early on, I used to be kind of, you know, and I think we all still maybe to a certain extent, get the nerves before, you know, you have to kind of be on for people. And one of the things that I found as a little mantra for myself was before I would go on stage or before I would do, you know, a talk or anything is nobody else can do this. No one else can do exactly what you're about to do, Stacy. So just own it, own it. Like there, and, and you know what, I know it sounds kind of trite and silly, but it was so empowering for me. And it was so like, it just was like a revelation. Like, oh, of course there's no other Stacy Frenis on the planet. I'm the only one, you know, for better or for worse with all my warts and all my flaws, but also with all that makes me unique. Right. And same with both of you girls. It's like, if you think about it, there is no other human on the planet that is you, that has your voice, that has your experiences. Um, and only you can do what you do. I think that that's what allows me that sense of what you're saying, Carol, what you hear in my voice, what you see in my demeanor, what you see in my art is just maybe a finally settling into, okay, well, this is me, this is me. And yeah, for better or worse, I'm going to, um, 
I'm going to be true to that, authentic to that. Yeah. You see that in the young artists that really do well now. I think that because mm -hmm. of, you know, Facebook and YouTube and social media and the ways that we can get our artistry out, um, people are demanding authenticity. They're demanding realness. So, you know, I think of, um, you know, some of the popular, some of the popular artists, young artists that are coming yeah. out, the ones that are really making it, you know, a big splash and getting their message heard, whether or not we agree with their message, but, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I think of, you know, right now, um, the, the artist that keeps coming to my mind is Dua Lipa or, you know, mm -hmm. some of these younger artists that are just Billie Eilish. Mm -hmm. Yes. Billie Eilish. Mm -hmm. she's, perfect. she's the perfect example. Yeah. And even Taylor Swift. I mean, she's kind of gone through different morphs of styles, but still like she's every, she's so herself at every iteration of herself. And I think that's kind of been a beautiful like thing for women to see girls, artists is to go, you know, I don't have to be pigeonholed into this one style or this one, it's a season of my life. And here's how I'm going to present myself in that season. And I think as, as we age and get older and change the way we want to, you know, present and the message we want to say, um, I think that's important to give ourselves permission to go, yeah, I'm changing, I'm growing, I'm transforming, and I can do that publicly and I can be real about that. And, um, I think you're right, Carol. I think a lot of the younger women, especially are, are really modeling that. Yeah. yeah. One thing I was thinking ladies is mindset. Um, you got to position your mindset differently. Um, how do you do that? Is there something, I mean, obviously the word of God, right. It helps us with our spirituality, but in terms of just your artistry, you have to put yourself in a particular mindset. Do you do so, an exercise or are you constantly reading something or getting inspired? What do you do to get the right mindset? Wow. That's a great question. Um, and it kind of differs depending on maybe what, what the project is or what I'm about to be working on. But, you know, I think one of the biggest things for me has been letting go of others' expectations of me. And like, that's a big, a mindset that says, I'm going to do this thing, whether or not it pleases the masses. Um, and that's really a self-empowering mindset. That's a mindset that says, kind of goes back to what I was saying before. I'm going to be true to myself. I'm going, I'm going to experiment with this thing. And even if it fails, even if it comes out dumb or, you know, not as high, excellent quality as I want it to be. Um, and you know, for yourself, when you are songwriting ladies, like sometimes you're just stumbling through chord progressions that sound terrible, or you're trying to figure out a melody and you're trying to rhyme the next line and it just sounds dumb and you go over and over and over until it sounds like it fits. And in some ways I think, um, staying true to that inner compass of just like, I'm going to try this thing. I think the mindset is that you continually see yourself as a creator, but not necessarily as someone who's constantly trying to please the masses, um, please yourself, look to please yourself. And that is, that's when you find, I think your true artist voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great response. Love it. Yep. Me too. Cause God created you created us specifically and designed us. So, you know, he is within us too, you know, so if we're just, if we're just jamming with him. <laughs> yep. That's it. And, and I think too, like, think about the way a tree grows. It's like a tree doesn't stress about when are my apples going to come out on the tree? Are my apples going to be bright and red and juicy? What kind of apples? How many apples? It's yeah. like, it just grows. And I think that's how we're created. We're created with these gifts and they naturally are going to grow out of us in time, in seasons and being comfortable with that and recognizing that it all comes from the divine flow of God's, you know, like you said, his design in us is what's creating the fruit. It's not our efforts. It's both, like you say, co-creating, but ultimately we're not responsible for how others, we're not responsible for how others receive our fruit. You know, um, I want to ask you kind of a fun question. You've had a lot of music that has crossed over into a lot of the film industry and TV industry. If you could just Tell us about maybe the funnest. Um, I mean, or, you know what well, I mean? Well, yeah, no, it's funny. Like, well, okay, so 
So uh, the funny thing about having songs that go into film and TV is that, you know, you have, you have someone who kind of works on your behalf that pitches songs to film and TV supervisors who are the ones who choose whether they're going to use it for a show or not. And I, I never, ever can tell where a song is going to land, how it's going to land. So years and years and years ago, in the very beginning, when I was getting started with this, I would write songs and put out an album again, independently. And some of the songs I wrote were like, songs for, you know, songs about friendship, songs about love, songs about just things that I was writing and thinking about. And they, they were, for me, they were, they were faith-based, a lot of them, but they weren't overtly saying Jesus or, you know what I mean? They just had kind of the, the metaphors and all of that. So I would send those to my, to my song plugger in, in LA and say, well, here's a batch of songs. If you can find a spot for them, great. If not, that's okay. And so um, I just remember the very, very, very first placement she got for me. Um, she called me and said, I got, I have a, we've got a placement for your song on, I think she said on ABC at 11 AM on Tuesday, August 12th or something. And I was just over the moon excited. And I remember hanging up the phone with her and quickly hitting and like getting an email blast out to all my email um, people and saying, I have a song coming on. Uh, you know, on, on ABC on Tuesday, August 12th at 11 a.m. and hit send. And then only after I hit send, I remember I had no idea what show it was on. I just told them what day and what time, like, <laughs> and I thought, oh, it's going to take a lot of scrolling to find my song at 11 a.m. We threw all the channels. So I called her back and said, Monica, what, what show is it on? And I was thinking it would be some sort of like, um, I don't know, back then there were shows like seventh heaven or so shows that had they were like family shows that had a little bit of a spiritual kind of undertone to them well no she said oh the young and the restless you know <laughs> it's like the soap opera and i was like the young and the what and so you know and here i'm thinking because this is this i had put out this email blast and most of my fans back then were all christians people i had met in church and i thought oh no these people are going to go like, what is Stacy's music doing on, you know, some steamy romance scene on the young and the restless, <laughs> but as it turned out, I watched it that day and I can still remember it was a, it was a scene where they were all sitting around a coffee shop and the characters were talking and it was kind of a wide shot of everybody in the, in the coffee shop and on the jukebox, there was actually a jukebox in the scene. You could hear this song I had written about, um, you know, it was, I knew the song was about hungering and thirsting after God. And it was just surreal hearing the lyrics kind of floating through this scene. And, you know, it's funny because they, they do this thing where the audio started out with the song and the scene, and then they gradually bring the song down and they bring the conversation up of the characters talking, you know, and it was just a really cool moment where I thought, okay, this is very interesting because nobody on set and nobody listening to this scene knows anything about this song, but I remember writing it and I believe the Holy spirit could still work in mysterious ways through those airwaves. <laughs> and, you know, time after time it ended up, I had a bunch of song placements on all the soaps back in the day, um, because it turned out to be a, a type of programming that needed a lot of, a lot of audio beds to it, you know, a lot of songs. So <laughs> I mean, go, go figure. That's mm -hmm. fun. Awesome. <laughs> I've only had one song placed into a film and I was so excited. I remember the same thing, oh. Just, you know, send it out to my fans and I'm going to be, you know, my song's going to be in a movie. And then um, when the movie came out, it was just the instrumental track and they took my voice out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it was a beautiful oh. instrumental track. <laughs> yeah, and that, that happens too. And yeah. they don't tell you, they just mm -hmm. do what they do and they can cut it and slice it and put it, you know, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, um, so just for our fans, we're going to go ahead and wrap up today's fun. I mean, just fun and what a blessing to talk with you, Stacey. Oh, um, thank you. Anyone, you can find Stacy at stacyprentice.com and we will um, follow up this um, interview. You can check your inbox and we'll send uh, links to her free gift and links to her YouTube. We'll make sure that you can find her easily. So um, perfect. And, yeah. And also to links to your um, books as well. 
Thank you so much for joining us. Rachel, thank you for co-hosting. I really love having your presence here. I love being a part of it. I just love being inspired and hearing all these amazing stories like Stacey's, um, just how God uniquely works with everybody and how, you know, we get this amazing opportunity, opportunity to co-create with him. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I've gotten so many great tips. And one of the tips, Stacey, is just your encouragement to be vulnerable. And mm -hmm. also, I want to remind everyone watching um, what Stacy said about there's no other person that can do what you, you do. God specifically created you so unique that no other person is like you. So be confident and walk forward in that gifting that he's given you. So thank you, Stacy. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. I just adore you, Stacy. Uh, again, God bless you. Bless your ministry. And um, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank, thank you for having me. <laughs> I just loved our time with Stacey Frenis. That was amazing. Um, Carol, I don't know about you, but like I said, and I mentioned, uh, the thing that I really pulled from was the vulnerability aspect of being a creative. How about you? Yeah, and like really just being, I think we talked about like really being naked and, um, and, and basically like what's the show called naked and unafraid <laughs> but i would not be afraid in that situation i mean i i would be afraid i should say i'm not gonna be doing that show <laughs> no, no we're not gonna be doing that show but we do get to as creatives we get to be naked and unafraid and completely vulnerable in our stories and our honesty and in our in our getting to our to ourselves for audiences and being exactly how god created us to be and embracing that and i love that she drove that point home in such a beautiful and gracious way leading by example right she just really that way in everything that she did you know with her books from um, her music her lyrics her speaking you can tell that she's just a very anointed woman of God, so. amen Possibilities are limitless, infinite and endless.